You may have heard the term grade 80 alloy chain thrown around without really understanding what it means. What exactly does that number in the title of a chain or chain sling stand for? What does it indicate about the chain? Understanding what uses each grade of chain is recommended for is imperative to using chain products accurately and safely. In this video, you will learn the differences between grades of chain, the differences between carbon and alloy chain, how chain grade and prices are related, and common problems related to chain use and chain grade. So let's get into it. Welcome back to the Lifting and Rigging channel. My name is Kay. For the purpose of discussing chain used in the rigging industry, the information in this video will be limited only to graded, welded chain. Weldless chain is not permitted for use in rigging applications. We sat down with lifting specialist Nate Fisher to understand the different grades of chain. Nate has been with Mizella for over six years, working with the lifting and rigging applications, with chain being one of the main products that he sells. Let's see what he has to say. The, the different grades signify the different strengths of the chain. And on that chain, you'll see every foot, every two foot, there'll be a link that tells you what grade it is. You also have different types of steel though. So you've got carbon steel and alloy steel. So those are two things you need to think about too, anytime that you're using chain. Grade 30 carbon steel chain is the lowest chain grade available on the market when it comes to graded welded chain and is commonly referred to as proof coil. Grade 30 is a rather generic type of chain that can be used anywhere from logging, trucking tie downs, or even playground equipment. Carbon chain in general is commonly used in bundling applications when alloy chain is typically not permitted. In fact, the lower the carbon content in the chain for bundling applications, the better. So it's not uncommon to see grade 30 chain as a part of a sling assembly used for bundling. You know, you're going to be using it in those kind of non overhead lifting applications. I've even seen it too, where people have used it in a horizontal application where they're just holding two things in place. You know, there's not really any overhead lifting happening, but they just want to keep, you know, two things separated at a certain length and they can use proof coil chain in that application. While grade 43 carbon steel chain has slightly higher strength to weight ratio in comparison to grade 30, the two chains are often used interchangeably. Grade 43 chain is commonly referred to as high test chain and is most often used for general utility, towing, and load securement. Grade 70 chain is the highest grade that you can purchase within the carbon chain category. Like grade 30 and grade 43, it is not recommended for overhead lifting. Unlike grade 30 and 43 chain, it's heat treated to make it more resistant to wear and abrasion as it's harder material with a higher strength to weight ratio. Grade 70 carbon steel chain is mostly manufactured with a golden colored finish and it's recognized throughout the industry as such. When trained properly, this can be an easy identifier for riggers to make sure that they avoid using it for lifting applications. While grade 30 and 43 chain can also be used in load securement, grade 70 chain provides a stronger, more durable option with a much higher strength to weight ratio. Grade 70 is most commonly where you're gonna hear transportation chain used. And grade 70 chain is specific to transporting items on a flatbed or some kind of you know hauling application where you're tying down a load to make sure it doesn't move. Some transportation chain, grade 70 chain, has a tag on it. And that can actually be a little confusing, but really that's just the tie down weight that's, that it's good for. It's not an overhead lifting application chain. Grade 80, grade 100, and grade 120 are the only chains rated for overhead lifting. And with each grade, you get a stronger chain. You're gonna to wanna to check and make sure that you know, whatever you're lifting has properly been tagged and you know, the grade 80, grade 100, or grade 120 that you're using is within the working load limits. 
In the majority of cases, either grade 80 or grade 100 chain can be used in a lifting application. However, there are certain situations where grade 80 is the better choice. Grade 100 chain is tempered at a lower temperature than grade 80 chain. This becomes important in steel mills, where chain that has been tempered at the highest possible temperature is preferable, as it is less likely to be permanently degraded by the extreme temperatures presented in the mill. So, in steel mills or other high heat environments, grade 80 chain is a preferred, often mandated option. Grade 120 chain is often indicated by blue, green, or other brightly colored finishes. As a general rule, depending on the manufacturer, grade 120 chain has a higher strength to weight ratio than grade 100 chain. When you're dealing with the lower grades of chain, grade 30 and grade 43, those are obviously going to be your least expensive. And then it's going to incrementally go up. Grade 70 is obviously going to be a little bit more. But when you get into the overhead lifting ones, grade 80, grade 100 and grade 120, the price for grade 80 and grade 100 is going to be nearly the same, if not the same. The jump from grade 80 to grade 100 is really nil. You know, you might as well do it. Um, but the jump to grade 120 is significant. There is a research and development factor for the grade 80, grade 100, and grade 120 because it is an overhead lifting application. So those are gonna those are gonna be priced accordingly. And plus the liability too that a manufacturer takes on, uh, that's gonna be a factor in it as well. But when dealing with the different grades of chain and the pricing factor to it. There's gonna be a whole lot more in a manufacturing process that goes into it for those overhead lifting grades. So naturally, those are gonna be priced accordingly. For those grade 70 on down, the manufacturing process isn't as stringent. Really, the cons of either alloy chain or carbon chain, it's just a con for chain in general. You know, if you damage one link, you have to replace that entire leg of chain. There's no patch job that you can necessarily do with carbon steel or alloy steel chain. That it's a four to one design factor. And that's why it can be so heavily regulated is because of that four to one design factor. Whereas wire rope, synthetic slings, things of that nature have a five to one design factor. It's much more common for mistakes involving chain and use of correct chain to be made by uninformed or untrained riggers. This is why it is extremely important for the safety of your personnel and equipment to ensure that your riggers are trained properly up to OSHA and ASME standards. The three most common problems are using hoist load chain for lifting applications, general misuse and abuse of alloy chains, and the use of grade 70 chain for overhead lifting. Let's get into each one. So hoist load chain is chain used in a lifting device such as a lever tool or a come along or a hand chain hoist. That hoist load chain has specific characteristics for that device. And typically one of those main characteristics that I'll say right now is that it doesn't stretch because when it goes through the device to be able to lift a load, it can't have any stretch characteristic to it because then it won't go through the pocket wheel that it needs to go through to be able to lift the load. That device's mechanical components will fail inside there before the chain does. So if you're using hoist load chain outside of that device, it's not a safe environment. You're gonna wanna use the grade 80, grade 100, and grade 120 overhead lifting chain as those are supposed to be used outside of a mechanical device. First of all, one of the great characteristics about using chain is that it can be very durable. But at the same time too, guys think that they are indestructible. So people use these things and abuse these things and throw them around and, and sometimes don't even bother to inspect them because they can be so durable. So I'd say the number one misuse and abuse is just thinking that they're indestructible and not properly checking them before being used. We like our chain to be able to hang nice and free in a fashion that is supposed to be in line with the links of the chain. And a lot of times, People can find themselves twisting them to get them into certain areas. Uh, that's not how they're meant to be used. So you wanna make sure that you're using them properly in the proper fashion. 
people think you can use grade 70 chain because it has a tag on it with a working load limit. But really that working load limit for grade 70 chain or transport chain is merely for tying down the load. It has nothing to do referring to overhead lifting. With your grade 80, grade 100, and grade 120, they have the ability to stretch. So you'll see, okay, my chain is stretching. I must be overloaded here. Let's put this load down. Whereas a grade 70 chain is just gonna snap and you're not gonna have the kind of reaction time that you might with the grade 80, grade 100, or grade 120. That's the difference. It's, it's a certain characteristic called ductility. And you'll not just find that with chain, you'll find that with shackles and hooks and other components like that. Are you looking to further your understanding of slings? Check out our free online lifting sling inspection course by clicking here, or check out the link in the description of this video. We've also got a great article on grades of chain, all in the links down in the description. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave us a comment if you have any questions or just wanna say hi. Once again, my name is Kay, and I'll see you later.